Hey Yins, welcome back to the shop. Super excited for this build. So you guys loved the Tensegrity table, the first one we did, and you loved the two-legged chair that I followed up with after. So in this video, we're gonna combine them and we're gonna make a Tensegrity chair. So I mocked this thing up in a 3D model, which I didn't do on the last two builds because I am uh, not that good at modeling, but this gave me the opportunity to make some templates. So we're gonna fire up Miss Piggy and we're gonna cut those first and then get to gluing up some parts. To cut our, we can do a little glue up before we get to uh, routing anything. And to do so, I'm gonna use these leftover chunks of guanacaste from the black rifle table. Yes, we still have some of that wood. And who knows? We may still even be building another project with them. Don't even need to zoom because I came in so close. All right, so I got a cut list here. We just need to cut one straight edge. Straight. And then from there, I should be able to get the rest of the parts I need out of this chunk that was just uh, chilling there, ready to die. This shit makes the nose, makes the nostrils drip. Anyway, we are laying out our parts now so we can domino these sons of bitches together. And I cut a little bit of an angle so I can make everything fit. And I don't have any precise measurements on this stuff. I just kind of eyeball it and go and try to get as straight grain as I possibly can on the points that will support weight. So <clears throat> one thing that's important here is you don't like, if you look, come here, tighter, closer, get closer. I'll zoom down. We only have probably a quarter of an inch to, to I don't know, maybe say three eighths here in this distance. So this grain runs like this. If I was to come straight off of here, it'd be a better joint for, for this arm here. That way it's complete straight grain and it's got a 90 degree mortise and tenon to, to add strength. This here, this section, is brittle. Same concept here. I didn't want to create a weak point in this part of the joint here, because if I would have left this wider, it would have been out to here and this whole part would have been crazy weak. So <clears throat> I, I tapered it down and now that'll be mitigated in order to make this strong. Cause this is the seat and this is the part where all of our weight's going to be held as well as here. So better safe than sorry. Now I'm going to whip out my chesticles we're gonna domino this thing. It's not plugged in. Let's go. Let's make a mockery. Some homemade dominoes here, courtesy of the factory of Jordan and Sam. Mm. Send a big shout out to those two for su supplying uh, squirreliness on this build. So we got shorter dominoes here. Just be aware if you do use uh, floating tannins, that you don't want to cut through where these are going to go. If I would have cut those any deeper, it would have popped out. That's why we marked it. Go to your home. Yeah. I ended up putting a bunch in these <laughs> where I'm going to be sitting. Because the goal here is to get my fat ass on this one. So you can stop bitching at me for not sitting in my own chairs. It's a no how much I suffer having to turn the fans off so the audio isn't dog shit. <laughs> but anyway, we're gonna glue these up and then I'm gonna cut the dados for the feet and then I'll cut the dados on this because I made a little bit of an alignment mistake and I gotta have to be this way. This is a new glue from Tight Bond. It's there like, it's like a super fast dry, which means we might be able to work with this by the end of the day. All right, so we've got this little angle clamp hickamajiggy from Bessie, who's the sponsor of this build. Thank you guys. We love Bessie. They sponsored the first 10 security table and they rule. 
I got a lot of questions in my last video about clamps. Ah. And the answer is Bessie. That's the only answer. Appreciate you guys sponsoring this. If you want to see more about all of my Bessie clamps, I've got that linked down below. All right. That thing, lifesaver. I need a margarita. All right, so everything is dry. Now I can come back. We'll get the templating done. We're gonna cut the joinery for our feet on this bottom plate. And then we're gonna cut all of our seed slats and we should be able to get a chair together pretty quickly. Or at least the parts for the chair. So Jordan just got all of the bum, these are the bum slats, hashtag it. And uh, he got those all dadoed. So they are going to seat on what's going to be the actual seat of this. Now a nice, you could go square across, but we're fancy as fuck around here. So we're gonna put a curve in these. And in order to make that easy, we're calling in the curviest of all of us, Miss Piggy. She is gonna cut these for us. Let's go. So to clean these up, what we're gonna do is run a bearing on this killer bit from Bits and Bits, who's uh, supporting the channel now. Thank you guys. Um, you guys wanna say 15% on Bits and Bits, I got a link down below. Uh, but they've got their double bearing pattern bit. I think this thing, uh, and it's got a spiral head. Really, 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 really nice bit. We're just gonna run that thing on there and we should be able to clean up all of these edges using the profile, the CNC cut as our guide. Let's get squirrely. All right, next part on the agenda is uh, tape. I'm gonna rough cut these things in the bandsaw and then I'm either gonna use a templating bit in the table if I can, that same one we just did all the chair parts with, or I'm gonna have to use a collet or a, a bearing on my handheld router. We gonna see. So the router table got a little bit squirrely on me on the last couple cuts for some reason. The motor's bogging down and uh, that shit happens. Tools don't work or break. So we're going to use the same bit in the hand router on our templates for the rest of the stuff we need to template. I took the bottom bearing off. We're going to cut halfway through our, uh, excuse me, our material is an inch and a half thick. The cutting head is about an inch on this bit. So we'll cut down an inch and then we'll flip the whole thing over and we'll use the cut side to finish the cut on the bearing. More of that will probably make sense after you watch me do it. So let's rip. Damn it! So, even with all that time and effort to prevent the fuckery, we still ran into where my damn dominoes poke through. So the only option here, I believe, is uh, we will inject that sucker full of epoxy, black epoxy, and I'll kind of blend it in. Uh, that'll give enough strength in the, in the hole, as well as like, uh, we, just from experience, I know this Guanacaste looks good with, with black. Pretty pissed off about that though, because I put like no, no less than a half hour into trying to prevent that. God, my time's worth nothing to you, stupid chair. All right, on to the next part. <laughs> I'm 
down. 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 All right, so the epoxy's dried, and uh, next order of operation here is to make this son of a bitch float and actually do a little bit of sanding and shaping before we get to that part. Um, so we gotta do some trimming, and I'm gonna trim. We kinda like where everything's at from here, so I'm gonna mark a few lines. I start trimming things back. I like where this thing is sitting. By putting that here, this doesn't jut out as far. Yeah, we should probably have built a template for this one. But who the hell's got time for that? Let's get squirrely. <laughs> no, unscrew it. I'll hold the, we'll do this tar part first. Okay. Yep. Woo! Almost got him. He's got that Greek focus. That didn't, that didn't even phase his ass. So in my brilliance slash potential stroke of insanity, the way I think I want to do the middle here is the first uh, tensegrity table failed when we ran our string through a piece of wood. It pulled straight through it. I've had to replace it. The second table, we had to beef up the cable and I just didn't really like the look of it uh, showing a little bit too much. So here's the concept of my peoples. Got a loop here. Let me, let me get this in a clamp. Yes, and then we'll slightly be proud and because this will be crimped, then all of this tension will be pulled onto this, which is supported by wood instead of directly through the wood. So we're gonna get one loop in, one loop crimped, and then we will uh, move on to crimping number two. going with it. It's a little tall, but I am tall, and it's my chair. Mine! Let's crimp. Go! So, we're gonna drill these, the holes here. We've got this rope. You and your stupid rope. One of the best movies ever. If you know which movie I'm talking about, comment. We're gonna drill a hole here, run this through, and we're gonna crimp it down on both of these sides. And if you're wondering how we're gonna stop it from moving side to side, we're also gonna crimp it up here. So let's make some holes. Good, let it go. She's floating! So this thing's holding pretty good. I think uh, once we get the, the crimson shit on it, the slack will come out of it, but we're gonna go to the final stages. We're gonna shape uh, the, the rest of what I'm gonna do on, on, on the body, and then uh, put the seat slats on, and we're gonna actually test this son bitch. So now for router B-roll, your second favorite to spray. And now, let us spray. Crimp it, Jordan. Team Crimp. Slow. Ready? Yeah. Ah! It rules. I never get you with that. So here's the thing with the tensegrity stuff is you have to have enough vertical, uh, you have to have enough space for things to be seen. Mm -hmm. A lot of people want to do tensegrity stuff, but then it's just a bunch of, there's no space. It only looks good when there's space. Right. Sam, just start putting your hands on it and putting tension on it to get it to where we kind of want it. I'm gonna hang her down. Let's see how much sitting I can do. I think I can sit on it. Just gotta see how much sitting. Okay, come on, baby girl. I gotta stay out in front of it. Oh, it's holding. It's holding. 
It's holding. It's like wobbly as shit, but it's working. Can I pick my feet up? I take incredible core strength. Ah! <laughs> ah! Oh, okay. See if one of you can sit. Go ahead, Jordan. Jordan weighs a buck sixty-five. I weigh two ninety. It's a good-looking chair, though. It looks awesome. So you're gonna see all of your weight's gonna want to fall over to one side. So don't fall. See? Oh, getting that lean back. I think it's just gonna fall over. I don't have enough pull on the front. Go here. Go ahead. You got me. Sit. Yeah, we need some stability. I'm wondering now, it's so close. It is so close. After testing yesterday, we noticed <clears throat> there's a lot of instability in, in this plane, this plane, this way. Don't worry about planes. And it's because we're triangulated from the bottom to the top. So everything it comes down this, this center line here. So what I wanna do is try to create some more stability. In my original design, I had our these were coming straight out of these seat slats. But when we built this out of the Guanacaste, Guanacaste is just not the strongest wood on the planet. So I wanna reinforce this front slat, and then we're gonna take some wire and bring it down to a center point here, and that should help us a little bit this way, and then we'll test it out and see if we need to continue and do the same thing on a back slat or something, something back here. We're also having some issues with rotation in the back here, because this keeps going down, so I gotta figure out a way to not have that happen. But first thing is first, front slide. All right, so Yens have been watching me ruin a seat slat, but we're not ruining it. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to create some reinforcement. Jordan, you need to learn how to measure because these are nowhere close to the same size. But one is going to go into the edge here. And what that's gonna do is create reinforcement for what's pulling down. Because if I was to just countersink and then pull a thread through here, I'd only have about a quarter to three eighths of an inch that I feel like would rip through the wood. And I don't want that. We don't want no rips, no rips. And then we're gonna have this interior part that's gonna act as a support spline against our, would that be a ridge line? No just our center line there. It's gonna act as support. So we'll cut that to be a little prettier and a little bit more hashtag sex. And um, then we're gonna put some holes through here and run another cable down and uh, see if that helps with the side to side shway at all. So we're still getting sway right here. So I think if I can take a point, and just come right down to there and then pin those, we're gonna be in a good way. Hopefully it works. And we did just punch a bunch of holes in our chair. Is it better? It's a million times better. Hot damn, that, that thing seems sturdy. Someone's skinny. Prepare your ass. Prepare your ass. I'm calling HR. <laughs> Don't call, Hank, Hank's having a bad day. <laughs> Hank's allergies are really bad. Go ahead, be careful. See how much it sways though. Please don't break, please don't break, please don't break. Is it way better? Is it worse? Are you trying to twist it or is it twisting on its own? No, I was trying. Okay, so don't try. Try to sit in it like it's a chair. I could sit in any chair and snap it in half. The last kind of problem we're seeing is that the back is coming out of tension when you sit in it. So to counterbalance that, I wanna get a cable that comes from the back here, runs up through the front and kind of pulls it back to it. So what we're gonna do is put a hole in the back. We're gonna come through that hole. We're gonna twist the cables in the center, come to the opposite sides and pulled down. And in my head, 
this works. So let's poke more holes in my pretty chair. Test number one, skinniest man in the shop. This, uh, oh, it's so much sturdier. Oh. Sam weighs what? About 50 after lunch. Just don't, you're so reckless. You are such a child. Huh? Hand off the wall, come on. Nice, okay, up. The final person. All right, so after adding a few more cables, you can see Jordan and Sam are both supported, weighing in around 150 to 175 pounds. The way it's made, the center of gravity, I think I have it too far forward, and all of our issues now are coming from this is tilting backwards, and the only way to stop that is to get more torque on this front. So it would have, I have to move that center of gravity back which means we'd have to rebuild the chair. So before I sit in this thing and we see if it holds me, let me know how you would fix the issues and concerns because I'm pretty sure we're good and stable this way. It's just a matter of this way that's become a problem. Now for the final test. Like I said, 150, 175, we'll say 299. I had a hefty lunch. Don't tell my wife or my cardiologist. <laughs> I mean, it's supporting me. There's absolutely zero chance I'm leaning back. It's pretty crazy though. I will say this, I'm sitting in the chair. I'm just, if I go back, it's, it's gonna explode. I can feel it exploding under my, my butt. All the compression of all the things. I mean, I'm gonna notch this one up as close to a W. This is a W. This is better than the last chair we made. I do love George W. This is better than the last chair I made. So that's gonna be a wrap on this build. It could use a little bit more tweaking, but I'd have to rebuild a lot of it. If you guys wanna see me do another one, let me know down in the comments below. And if you wanna see me build other things that kind of float and that are cool, I got that linked up right here. Check it out.